Well, good morning, everyone. It's, uh, it's good to see you. Uh, if you don't know, uh, I'm John, and uh, I work with Dave um, as a pastor at Cornerstone. And it's good, uh, good to see you. As Dave said, it feels a little bit different today, doesn't it? Lots of uh, uh, distractions and dust and things like that. Uh, I hope it's not too uh, off-putting uh, for you. Um, can I encourage you, if you've, if you've got a Bible nearby, to keep it open? Um, uh, in that passage uh, that Joyce read to us from Philippians chapter 3, it's on page 1180, 1180 as uh, we continue uh, our series looking at this letter uh, that the Apostle Paul wrote. Uh, I read this week of a, a survey taken by a Bible college, a college where people train to be uh, full-time uh, Christian workers, maybe children's workers or church planters, church pastors, student workers. And uh, the college, it offers the the, uh, students an opportunity to to, to look in depth at the Bible and to study uh, doctrine and the original languages of the Bible, um, church history, practical help and teaching uh, on how to um, pass the, the truth of the Bible on to others. Three or four years of intense study. Uh, just to be clear, it, isn't, it wasn't the college that Dave and I uh, went to. Um, and uh, the, the, the college, it, um, it, took, uh, it took a survey and it asked former students to identify one area where they wished they'd received more instruction. One, uh, one area on reflection where they wished they'd have had uh, greater input. What would have been most useful for them? And the result of the survey was perhaps uh, surprising. The most uh, repeated answer given to the question on what would have been of uh, what they would have liked more help with was this. How do I live the Christian life? How do I live the Christian life? Maybe you, uh, maybe you think that surprising. I think that the college certainly did. That the thing that, that those actually involved in, in full-time ministry, on reflection, the thing that they wanted most help with, felt most ill-equipped to do, was simply to, to live out the Christian life. But perhaps it shouldn't surprise us so much, should it? Uh, after all, much of, much of the Bible, much of uh, the Apostle Paul's writing, uh, much of this letter to the, uh, to the church in Philippi is focused on teaching churches, teaching believers how to live as followers of the Lord Jesus. We're not just told, are we, how to, to enter God's kingdom. We're told how to, how to live in it. Many of us uh, here this morning, I'd imagine the, the vast, vast majority have believed that the good news of Jesus, that the gospel of Jesus, we've received new life. We've believed the good news of Jesus' death and and resurrection. Uh, And we've trusted in him for the forgiveness of our sins. As we were thinking last week, our confidence has been placed in Jesus. But it's not just that we've believed something in the past, is it? Or it shouldn't be. We, We now live as followers of Jesus. Seeking to, to live out the reality of, of what the gospel has made us. The gospel has made us children of God. And we seek to live out that reality. Whether, whether we've just started to follow Jesus. I know some here have recently started to do that. Or whether we've been doing it for years. Regardless of whether we've studied at four years at a Bible college. Or whether we're considering the Bible for the very first time. We, we all need instruction, guidance on how to live the Christian life. And, th- and this little section of Paul's letter that we're looking at this morning is, is full of instruction about how we go about doing that. So, so if you're here this morning as a believer, as I say, I'm sure most of us are, then, then I pray, my, my hope, my prayer, is that we'd be encouraged, helped by this instruction. And we'd listen carefully to what the Lord says to us through it. Let's, uh, let's pray together and ask for God's help 
as we do that. Let's pray. Father God, so many of us here this morning would confess that we sometimes find it hard to to follow the Lord Jesus, living as you would want us to. So please uh, please help us this morning through through these words that you inspired Paul to write. Uh, Help us to listen to, to your instruction, to your guidance. But we know it is for our good. So please help us and help us to respond obediently to all that you say. We ask for your Spirit's help in that as we pray in the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. Well, this morning then, I just want to highlight uh, three things <clears throat> that Paul wants the, the, the believers in Philippi to know. Three uh, instructions that, that he thinks God's people need to hear about how to live the Christian life. And the first is this, keep, keep pressing on, says Paul. Keep pressing on. There's, uh, there's lots of people who um, are normally with us here at Cornerstone who are away today. Uh, there's a few more, empty, uh, few more empty seats than normal, lots of people on holiday. And quite a group of people from Cornerstone have uh, travelled up to the Lake District uh, this week. Uh, and they're at the, the Keswick Bible Convention. And uh, in a couple of weeks' time, uh, Joe and I uh, will be there too. Uh, it's a great, uh, a great experience. Uh, but I must confess, the journey up to the Lake District, the journey up to Keswick, isn't such a good experience. Um, it's, it's a long way. It's a long way from Portsmouth to, uh, to Keswick. And uh, as, uh, as we were set off in the car, um, from, from previous experience, I, I suspect it won't take many hours before the cry will come up. How much further is it? How much further is it? Are, are we nearly there yet? Can, can we have a break soon? Can we stop? To be fair to the children, it's normally Joe that says it um, first. And, uh, and I, would, I would, I kind of think of something to say to encourage everyone in the car. I will say something like, you know, we've, we have gone a long way. Uh, the progress has been good so far. We're, we're getting closer, but we've still got more to go. We, we can't think about stopping just yet. There's, uh, there's more to go. You know, the Christian life is often compared to a, to a journey, isn't it? Uh, and in this, uh, this little section of Paul's letter, he uses language associated with, with traveling, with a journey. In fact, per, perhaps more accurately, he uses the language of a, of a race. He speaks of pressing on in verse 12. Or of uh, forgetting what's behind, verse 13. Of straining towards what's ahead. Verse 14, he speaks of pressing on to win the prize. The, the Christian life isn't pictured as, a, as something that's static. It's, it's a journey. It's a, it's a movement. It's a race. In verses 8 to 11, uh, which we looked at last week, Paul, Paul speaks about his desire to, to know the Lord Jesus more. That that was his aim, his hope, to know Jesus more. He, he longed to know the power of the Holy Spirit that had raised Jesus to life at work in his own life. But Paul speaks of his willingness to, to suffer for the Lord Jesus. To, to participate, he says, in his sufferings. Paul, Paul wants to, to know Jesus and to to follow the Lord Jesus with increasing faithfulness. That's what he's striving for. That's, that is the journey that he's on, the, the race he's taking part in. And although he's traveled a long way on that journey, he says, I'm not there yet. I've, I've, still, got, I've still got more to go. I've, I've, I've not arrived in knowing Jesus in being obedient to him, in, in knowing the power of the Holy Spirit working in me. I've still got more to go. I'm not at the finishing line yet. In fact, that's how this little section begins. Verse 12. Not that I've already obtained all this. I think that's what he's just been speaking about, those things. Or I've already arrived at my goal. But I press on to take hold of that which Jesus Christ took hold of me. But Paul wants to keep pressing on in knowing Jesus. In following him with increasing joy and, and faithfulness. He knows that he can't stop yet. He, he's, not, he, he's not obtained everything. 
that is there to obtain. You know, we might think that if anyone was going to say, I've, I've kind of reached as far as I can go with knowing Jesus, in, in suffering for him, in serving him faithfully, if, if, if anyone was going to say that, we might think it would be Paul, wouldn't it? He, he writes this letter from a, from a prison cell. He, he has faithfully experienced all kinds of hardship, all kinds of suffering as a follower of Jesus. Did, did anyone know Jesus better than Paul did? He, he knows Jesus, I would suggest, more than anyone on the earth. He, he's journeyed a long way, hasn't he? He's, he's traveled a long way as a follower of Jesus. But Paul says, I'm not there yet. I've not obtained all I can. I'm, I'm pressing on. I want to know Jesus more. If that's true for Paul, then it's true for the Christians in Philippi, and it's true for us here today in Portsmouth. We're, we're, we're not there yet. Stephen uh, Lawson, Lawson, writing about these verses, he says this, this must be our attitude in Christian living. No matter how long we've been a Christian, no matter where you are in your Christian journey, you should always be pressing on for greater growth in Christ-likeness. None of us have arrived. There is still much maturing to take place in every believer. Paul adds in verse 15 that everyone who's, who's mature should, should take such a view of things. Mature Christians don't think that they've arrived and are, are ready to slow down. No, they, they keep going. They keep pressing on. It appears that some in the church of Philippi were saying that there was, there was no need to keep on pressing on. That they'd stopped running the race wholeheartedly. That they weren't living up to, to the standard that Paul says. To, to the way of life that they'd been called to live as followers of Jesus. So Paul uh, commands them and us, verse 16, only let us live up to what we have already attained. Can I, can I ask you then this morning, can I ask myself, are you, am I, pressing on as followers of the Lord Jesus? Are we, are we running hard, living up to the things that we know to be true? Are, are we really trying to, to seek to know Jesus more? Or have you, have I, become slack in our desire to know Jesus more? in our pursuit of Christ-likeness, in, in our willingness to, to suffer for him, to make him known? Are we distracted, to use the, the, the word of verse 19, by earthly things? Are we running after Jesus or walking? Or have we stopped? The Christian journey is, is long, and none of us are there yet. So let's, let's listen to Paul and let's keep pressing on. Pressing on in knowing Jesus more. Pr pressing on in, in obediently following him. Pressing on in a willingness to suffer. Now those things, um, those things aren't easy. And Paul knows that. So he reminds his readers of two important things that will help them, help us, to, to keep on going, to keep on pressing on. So, uh, so secondly, let's see that we as believers are to keep looking forward. We're to keep looking forward. In, uh, in verse 10, Paul has spoken of his, his willingness to, to suffer for the Lord Jesus. More, more than that, he actually speaks of his um, willingness to, to die for Jesus. But, but that wasn't the end of Paul's ambition when it came to following Jesus, this journey. He didn't just think, I'm ready to suffer and then I'll die. No, no Paul's, Paul's aim, his vision was, was more than that. He, he looked forward to being raised to life with Jesus. To being raised to be with Jesus. He was looking forward to a resurrection to come. Look at verse 20. But our citizenship is in heaven, 
we eagerly await a saviour from there, the Lord Jesus Christ, who by the, by the power that enables him to bring everything under his control will transform our lowly bodies so that they will be like his glorious body. Paul, Paul eagerly awaited the day when he would be with the Lord Jesus. The day when he would be resurrected like the Lord Jesus. That, that, that's the, the prize and the goal that he's uh, running towards. Paul, Paul longed for that day. And because he longed for it, it enabled him to keep going in the present. He, he was fixed on the future. A few years ago now, in fact, it was quite a few years ago, I read a book um, called Playground of the Gods. Uh, it's one of the best books I've ever um, read about what it is to be an elite uh, sports, uh, sports person. And the author spent uh, two weeks with various uh, sporting gods, men and women, observing their, their training and their lifestyle, their, their attitude, tr trying to understand the life that they lived in order to be a very top athlete. They all trained uh, incredibly, incredibly hard. They all made massive sacrifices. They all found what they were doing to be incredibly difficult and hard and painful at times. But perhaps more than anything, the thing that came across in the book is that they were all slightly obsessed with winning the prize. They, they longed not really to be running or rowing or cycling at 6am on a cold Monday morning, but they longed to be crowned a champion. That they looked forward to the gold medal. That they anticipated that the prize at the end of all their hard work. That that's what, that is what kept them going. That is what marked them out from the rest. And Paul says, if we're to follow in suffering the Lord Jesus, we need to keep looking forward to what's been promised for us. I remember hearing someone say once, um, they were, uh, he was a, a lovely Christian man, but I remember him saying that being a Christian was such a, a joy to him that if he died and discovered that it was all in vain and the gospel wasn't true, he would have no regrets. You know, I'm not so sure Paul would agree with that sentiment. In fact, elsewhere in 1 Corinthians 15, Paul says, if only for this life we have hope in Christ, we of all people are the most pitied. For, for Paul, following the Lord Jesus, it meant suffering. It meant imprisonment. It meant tears. But he kept pressing on, not just because of what Christ had done for him in the past, but because of the hope he had of being with Christ in the future. That, that future of a, of a resurrected body, that, that future where suffering will be no more. That, that future with the gloriously risen Lord Jesus. Verse 14, I press on towards the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenwards in Christ Jesus. When I was at primary school, I lived uh, close to, um, to, to my school. Uh, it was maybe a, a five-minute uh, walk away. I, I say a five-minute walk. In reality, I rarely, I rarely walked it. That, that's not quite true, actually. I would, I would generally walk to school, um, but I would always run home. I don't have lots of memories about life at primary school, but I do remember at the end of school, I would more often than not run all the way home. I didn't really hate school, but I didn't particularly like it. And I was happy to be home. Because there I was with people that I, that I loved, and I'd much rather be at home than at school. And so I'd run. I'd run hard for home. You know, I think that phrase, I think it sums up how Paul wants believers to live. 
running hard for home. Running hard, pressing on, not, not giving up, but, but running hard. Pressing on, not, not stopping or wasting time, but running hard. But running hard towards something. Running hard for home. Look, looking forward to, to getting home, to, to being with Jesus, to being where our citizenship, our home really is with Christ. I suspect we need to remind ourselves of that future more, more often. Perhaps we need to, to sing, as we've been doing this morning, of that, of that hope that we have, of that heavenly home, of resurrected bodies. Maybe we need to make an effort to, to consciously consider it. Maybe we need to think, as we gather together as a church, each Sunday, in some way, we're, we're looking forward, we're anticipating that, that future to come when we'll gather together around the Lord Jesus. We do need to keep looking forward if we're to keep pressing on. Thirdly and finally, there's one more thing that will help us to keep pressing on as followers of Jesus. Yeah, we need to, we need to keep looking forward, but we also need to keep looking from side to side in the race. We need to keep learning from others. Keep, keep learning from others. We, we run this race, as I say, we're running this race, we're running hard, we're thinking about the journey's end, the race end, we're looking forward, but we're also looking to our side, we're looking at others who are running the race as well. And maybe actually more accurately, we're looking at others who are just a little bit further ahead of us in the race, and we're trying to copy them, and to learn from them, and to be helped by them. Paul wants uh, the church in Philippi to, to follow his example, but to also copy the, the model of, of other faithful believers. That's what he says in verse 17. Look down at verse 17. Join together in following my example, brothers and sisters, and just as you have us as a model, keep your eyes on those who live as we do. Keep looking, keep learning from, from other faithful followers from other people on this race, that those who model what it is to keep pressing on with Jesus. But Paul speaks later in verse 19 of, of those who he describes as enemies of the cross, who are, who are just concerned with the, the here and now, who aren't really citizens of heaven. But Paul says, don't, don't follow their example. Watch, watch out for people like that. Instead, keep learning from faithful followers of Jesus. The, the Christian journey, the race, is not to be made alone. It is to be run alongside others who, who can model to us what it is to pursue Jesus. At, at Cornerstone, in fact, at many of those 639, was it, FIC churches, um, there's a great emphasis on, on knowing and, and studying and teaching God's word. And, uh, and it's right, I'm glad that we do that. Because God's word contains the, the instructions that we need on how to live as God's saved people. But, but in our desire to give such a, a priority, a right priority to God's word, we need to remember that we don't just need to, to look to the Bible as followers of Jesus. That might sound heretical. But we don't just look to the Bible. Paul says we are to look at the lives of others. Keep your eyes on those who live as we do. It's Paul's words. Keep your eyes on them. Keep looking at people who model the Christian life, who are pressing on as believers. Learning from others is, is vital if we're going to run the Christian race. You know, I'm, I'm thankful to, to those who have modelled the Christian life to me, who have set me an example to follow. 
can think of many people who, who did that, members of my own family especially. That I'm sure many of, many of you can think of people who've modelled the Christian life to you. People that you've, you've been able to look at and, and learn from, follow in some way. I hope, uh, hope you're thankful for people like that. Can I, can I perhaps uh, encourage you to, to let people know if, if, you've, if you've been helped by them, if you've been encouraged by them, maybe people uh, perhaps you haven't seen for a long time. Let, let them know what an encouragement they have been to you. It might help them to, to keep on running, to keep persevering, to keep setting an example. You know, if we're going to learn from others... We have got to get close to them, haven't we? <laughs> you, you can't see the Christian life being modelled at, at a distance. You've got to see people's example. Which means we need to, as believers, we need to invest time in the lives of other believers. Maybe that's in a, a connect group here at Cornerstone. Maybe that's in a group of, of two or three others who you meet with to, to pray and to encourage each other. Maybe it's through reading a biography of a Christian. Maybe it's uh, just through spending time and meeting up with uh, a Christian who's just a little bit further ahead in the Christian journey than you are. We need to ensure that we invest time in, in relationships if we are to learn from others. And also, if we're to be a model for others, a younger Christian who perhaps can learn from us. We all need examples. We need faithful Christians who model the life of Christ to us. We need to keep learning from others. How do we live the Christian life? Paul told us three things. Keep, keep pressing on. Keep pressing on. Know, know Christ more. Don't, 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 in one sense, be satisfied with your, with your knowledge, with your obedience, with your, what you're willing to do right now. Keep, keep pressing on. And to do that, you need to keep looking forward. Keep looking forward to the, to the race end. Keep looking forward to, to the welcome of the resurrected, the glorious Lord Jesus. And keep learning from others. Keep running hard for home. Let me finish with Paul's closing words. My brothers, my sisters, for whom I love and long for, stand firm in the Lord in this way. Let's pray together. Father God, uh, we pray, please, that you'd help us to keep pressing on as Christians, grow, growing in our knowledge of, of the Lord Jesus, in, in our desire to, to serve him and, and even to suffer for him. Help us not to be content to, to slow down, but to press on as followers. Forgive us if we've, if we've stopped running. Help us to, to start again. And, and we pray that you'd encourage us to do that as we, as we look to the future, as we look to that great resurrection to come, as we look to the day when we will stand before the, the glorious Lord Jesus and we will know him perfectly. Lord, help us to reject all teaching that suggests that we can know, know everything now, that the best is now. Help us to keep looking forward. And help us too to, to learn from others. We, we thank you for those that have set an example to us in our lives who have helped us uh, to keep going as Christians, maybe to start as Christians. Help us to continue to learn from one another, to invest time in doing that. And help us, please, to set an example for others to follow too. We ask all these things 
in the name of Jesus, uh, our risen, glorious Saviour. Amen.